Hello. Uh, do you hear me at the last, at the end of the meeting room? Right. So after technical difficulties, let's start. I'll be speaking about software collections, which were introduced by Jindřich Novi last year. And I'd like to give you some summary of what he did last year. I'm Marcela Mašláňová. I'm working as team lead of languages team. And we are working mainly on Python, Ruby, Perl, Prolog, and some part of Java, especially uh, stuff around Maven. So I'll tell you what are the software collections, which problems we are trying to solve, which tooling we are supporting in RHEL and Fedora, and how it should how you should package if you are interested in collections. So software collections could be package or set of packages, which are giving user possibility to install the same software of the different version on his operating system. Is it independent, independent on the system, so it's not interfering with system libraries, and it shouldn't break your computer? Um, we are trying to solve problem of installation more versions. Usually people uh, download downloads Tarball from upstream projects and manually build them and install them into user local. Or they are using places like opt or different directories defined by, by their company policy. Uh, system administrators need to use symlinks or NFS shares to share the different version among their computers. Mm, there are also different approaches how to solve problem of more distributions of the same software. Environment modules, they are, long, they are used for a long time. They are usually used in with NFS shares. So you have probably the same problem as you have with symlinks and NFS. Uh, there are exist specific tools for languages like Perlbrew or RVM and probably more for more languages. I use the Perlbrew, which is quite good for developers because you can install different versions as regular user. You don't need root access. And you can then easily switch between various releases or between releases with various flags for compilation. So you can test your applications with different versions and different settings. So developers are usually interested in exact version of software. There is uh, currently many people are interested in Ruby, maybe because many cloud projects are written in Ruby. And they tend to use some version. Well, last year we did update from Ruby 1.8 to 1.9, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't pleasure for many Ruby developers because they maintain projects on various distributions. So uh, at the time when Fedora made the update, they have many broken gems and they couldn't use it and support it because they have also different tasks which they need to fix first. So this usually happens in distributions like Fedora, which are moving quite fast. We are trying to release Fedora every six months. Uh, and there are other developers which prefer latest and greatest. In my opinion, all web, de web developers like to see the latest versions. And that is very hard to do in distributions like RHEL, which is claimed to do not break ABI or API for the whole release. So we are trying to create some recommendations or tooling. How can we, um, how can we give users portability of their application across different versions of distributions? We are also trying to bring some better packaging or deployment for systems which have more versions of the same software or conflicting software. So I see many times that some project is based on application which is already 
uh, in the system, but it has old version. So they are trying to package it and install it in standard way, which might break the other tools, which are already part of the system. Um, so software collections could solve this problem by installation into isolated part of the system. Another use case for software collections could be porting and testing applications on mailing list. Uh, we have a request from one user and then success story, how he port Perl application from very old version to the latest. He created a Perl collection, which packaged the latest Perl 5.16, and he was trying to port his application, which was written for Perl 5.8. That was probably very hard, and he was using very old distribution. So when he poured the application successfully, he moved with the whole collection and with his application to the new distribution. Then he was quite sure that the application will be working. He won't have any problems with Perl, and he needs to solve only differences between operating systems. If the application was small or not using any anything strange on the system, then it could be working flawlessly. Well, another usage of software collections could be a deployment of your RPMS or your application. One user has many, many computers and they are running more versions of the same distribution. So they are using for the development Qt libraries and they want to have the same application on all distributions. So they are now creating the collection and the application and it's running the same way on both distribution releases. So we are trying to uh, help users and developers to do easier packaging and deployment for various distributions. Um, let's say these are success stories in enterprise Last year was released development toolset, which is using software collections for their packaging. Uh, they are now supported on RHEL 5 and RHEL 6. Uh, it's tooling for C, C++ development, and there are things like GCC, O-Profile, and such stuff. If you are interested, you can read more in an article on Red Hat Developers blog from their engineer. The other big believer in software collection are OpenShift guys. OpenShift is a cloud developed partly in Red Hat. They, their OpenShift enter enterprise is using Ruby and Rails software collections. OpenShift is usually using cartridges, which is another possibility how to install more versions of software on your computer. Uh, but they are usually taking a lot of stuff which is bundled together without any review. So you can't be sure what is installed inside. And for the enterprise use, they'd like to see Ruby and Rails reviewed and packaged properly. So no problems with licensing, bundling, and such stuff. So let's look at the tooling. Uh, the main tool which you need for running collections are SCL utils. It's used for building RPMS, but also used during runtime. Software collections have few articles on our Red Hat developers blog, and you can read a lot about lot, lot documents on Fedora projects pages. I prepared some, uh, some examples of usage. So as you can see, I have a RHEL 6 virtual machine and I listed all collections which I have installed from personal repositories. Some of them are very experimental, so they are not provided anymore. Uh, I picked easy example, which fit on my slide. So I installed in Python one module. Uh, here in this page is enabled the collection of Python 3.2, and only in this patch session will be enabled a new Python. So the rest of the RHEL system is still using Python 2, 6, 4. And 
it's not aware about a new version. So you don't have to be afraid that your binaries will break. As you can see here. Uh, there is new location for the files, so they are located in opt-rh. Uh, we are using different directories for installation according to file hierarchy sys standard. Uh, every vendor should use their own directory on the system, so you can install more versions of whatever you want in your directory. So in this case, was used opt-rh and Ruby193 as the name of the collection. This directory contains enable script, which is switching on the whole collection stuff, and root directory, which contains all usual directories. These are used for installation of all things which will be built in Ruby collections, so usually gems. And <coughs> only gems from this directory are used in the collection. No gems from standard paths like user lib or user share, because we can't be sure they would be working. How it's really working? So RPM can't handle two versions of one software. So we were looking for some solution how to do it without uh, changing the whole RPM. And we renamed the packages, which is standard way how to do it, but usually they are installed in the standard paths. In this case, we'd like to see as few changes in spec file as possible. So we use the same spec file, but during RPM build, we are changing the output. So if you want uh, RPM, source RPM from collection, we run RPM build with definition of collection and it's built with the prefix. Without it, it's created standard RPM. Well, and RPM or Yum wouldn't be happy only about the uh, change of name of package. We need to also change provides and requires. So in the example, our provides of Rails package all have those prefixes of the collection. The whole collection is working very easy because, in fact, it's only changing paths. So the enable script is redefining path, LDA library path, and one path. You can define what you want to change during running the collections, so it's up to you. These are standard. Um, now when I enable the Ruby collection, I can run Ruby and it will be executed from the new location. As you can see, it's the new installation. Uh, because it would be quite a lot of work to package everything into packages, you can still use CPAN, RVM, or PIP, or whatever you are using for your languages. And it, it will install them into opt rh something user local instead of the standard path. So you still have to distinction between the system installation and collection installation. Uh, well, if you want to create application, let's pretend this is application. Uh, you usually used Shebang, in this case, user bin pedal. But if you are running an application, you should use user bin env pedal. Uh, the env is using the current which is in paths. So in collection, if you would use the first shebang, it would still run the system parallel instead of the new one. Uh, guys from OpenShift wasn't very happy about env because they have a lot of installations on their computer and they like to be sure that user will enable only the correct one. So we add for them uh, this shebang. As it's similar to user bin and it points to opt-rh. Both examples, well, it depends what you want to do. If you want to change versions often, it's better to use env. 
I guess everyone is now using a C Linux. So if you are wondering if it's still working, is it? Since RHEL 6 and in for or Fedoras, you can copy contexts of one directories to another. So in this case, he copied user contexts into optrh user. Then you just restore those contexts and it's working. Well, you still need to solve some strange cases like downloading applications in strange locations, but that's different problem. Uh, we have a lot of documentation. We are working with documentation guys a lot and have mm, very nice wiki pages with a lot of information. As you can see, even macros are defined here very good. And there are also many how-tos like to solve different use cases or packaging problems. So I have still a lot of time, so I'd like to show you how it's working with packaging. Uh. <laughs> so uh, the first thing is create meta package, which gives a name to the whole collection. It usually contains only macros, which will be used by RPM but there could be also RPM hacks in case it collection doesn't work flawlessly. That was case of Perl and Python, which has some specific. I know if you don't see anything, Right. So as we can see here, uh, there's not many, ch it's not very complicated to create a meta package. You just need to create name in the global section and mark it as a seal package. Uh, then you need to build the required SCL utils build, create some description, runtime package, build package, and that's it. Here's the important part about creating enable script, which is here uh, changing paths. These three lines will create the enable script. You will create the macro set, that's it. Well, Okay, the meta package is quite easy. Problem is our other packages. In this case, I was using Ruby, which is nicely packaged, and it was fairly easy. <laughs> um, the next thing uh, was Ruby interpreter, which is not easy, and I won't show you the spec file, because we would be here very long. Uh, we built it in mock. I was using virtual machine for building, but it's better to isolate building of collections from your regular system because you could be surprised what macros will do in your regu regular building paths. Uh, we need to create prefixes for every package which will be in collection and change provides and requires. So I'll show you the easiest package and most popular probably. Uh, we added here only definition of the package on the top of the spec file, these two lines. The rest is generated from gem 2 rpm and we need to change uh, requires of the package which are mm, listed in, in the spec file. The rest of provides and requires is created correctly by RPM during build. Mm. Okay, the another important part is that you during build you need to install and build in the new location. So for gem installation is enabled the collection. How this paragraph is running build in the collection. Because we need the build root to be correct and new. 
or you can run some specific commands which will be used from the packages which are already in the collection. So this example wasn't very problematic. I guess this was easy package to do. Uh, but we have a lot of packaging and we are lazy. So we have some automatic tools which are doing stuff for us. Uh, everything which have some what what have some strict rules like Perl modules, Ruby gems, Python modules, PHP. It can be automatically created, download from upstream and created spec files for that. So we are using for a long time CPAN spec, gem 2 RPM or pip2 RPM. And we can we have also a tool which can create collection packages for us. It's called spec 2 SCL and now supports Perl, Ruby, Python, PHP. And we could probably add more languages, but these aren't interesting for our team. Here you can see, again, differences between system rails package and collection package. So not very difficult to do. At the end, I have uh, a list of testing repositories, which you can try if you are interested. Most of them were built for rail 6. We have, it's probably not very much seen. We have Perl 16, uh, Ruby 193 with Rails 323, which are quite popular, and Python 27 and Python 33. There are only interpreters and some essential libraries for support of different frameworks, because we don't want to package even also frameworks which are changing quite fast, and we would spend a lot of time on that. There was also packaged Apache, which is a lot of fun, PHP, MySQL, Postgres, and some Unix connectors. So, thank you. Indra maybe wants something to tell us about new improvements. So that was Indra. Do you have any questions about collections, packaging? Yeah? Oh, Matthew? You was the first. <laughs> um, well, you need to do some changes. Uh, you need to do some changes. could probably answer it better because he's developer of SCL details.
Steven. I guess Python is working only. Uh, Python 2 is working with Django app, and Python 3 is not working with. <laughs> yeah, sure, I was trying to do not answer this question. <laughs> Well, yes, we were playing with, uh, the question was if we can uh, build nested collections in collection, and we were trying to build in enabled collection, but I guess that is quite easy to do. The more problematic thing is to find the collection which will be working with the another thing which you are created. And I guess that could be doable. I guess building collections is easy. Hard is to pick the correct packages. <laughs> correct, uh, it's hard to pick the correct packages which will be working together and you need to do some changes because many times you have hard-coded paths. So that's the, that's the worst thing on collections. Okay, you'll be my probably my example about porting applications from Perl 5.8. Well, the question was, was what was the question? <laughs> yeah, sure, that's possible. No, we don't have any plan. Uh, the repository which I showed you are only for testing and people can play with it. And we will see if it will be used by users or not. Well, we created collections which were wanted by our co-workers, but everyone can create their own. We'd like to see that users will be using our tooling for their own work. <laughs> no more questions? Okay, thank you.